tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Why in the world do I point you to the Butterworth filter in Wikipedia? Because did you know what a Butterworth filter was? The Butterworth filter is a type of signal processing filter designed to have a frequency response as flat as possible in the pass band. It is also referred to as a maximally flat magnitude filter. It was first described in 1930 by the British engineer and physicist Stephen Butterworth in his paper entitled On the Theory of Filter Amplifiers. Now we go to another page, and that's that one. It's the Autodesk Maya 2019 page. New in animation is a selection of new graph editor filters, Butterworth and Key Reducer. So they're new here, and here you see a little bit about how they work. And they come from Motion Builder, which is a computer software for creating character animation. Not so popular as it was in 2009, I guess. But maybe I'm mistaken. I'll show you the, uh, the usage of the Butterworth and Key Reducer filter. Uh, they're mainly used for motion capture data because they come in a certain density which you want to ease up. You want uh, not every keyframe a key, but instead maybe every tenth keyframe a key, but at very cr critical points you need keyframes every key. Okay, um, we create under polygon modeling, for example, a plane. This is our ground plane. And we go to FX because it's a special effect now. Uh, we create a dynamic simulation which we will later turn into keyframes and the keyframes will be uh, simplified using the Butterworth and the key reducer uh, filters. Okay, fills and resolvers create passive rigid body. Why a passive rigid body? Well, because it's, it's not supposed to move but it's supposed to be felt hard by our second object which is a ball, a, f a sphere, which will fall down. Falling down means it needs gravity. You can create an active rigid body, but you can create gravity as well. So when you create gravity with this object selected, it adds gravity to this, this object. When we run the animation, our ball falls down, and that's it. Very simple. Give it another color. So when we select it, we find here the rigid body tab here in the attribute editor. If you don't have the attribute editor open, just uh, use Control A to open it. Rigid body two, it's called because I tried it out with rigid body one before we started this tutorial. So it's active. If I make it passive, it doesn't do anything but uh, active, it does do what it does. I want to give it a, a little spin, and the spin impulse is right here, and let's not talk, talk about X, Y, and Z, I just give it an impulse in X, uh, and be careful with this value because um, a spin impulse of 10 is pretty mighty. 0 0.4, how about this? You see the sphere comes with that spin, and then jumps over that surface. It's elongated just a little bit, so we have a little bit more keyframes here. We extend this to 200. And what I'll do now is I pick the sphere and I go to animation, because now it's we're leaving the uh, dynamics world and entering the animation world. Key and here you can bake the simulation. It's a dynamic simulation which we've just done and we want to bake it. So let's use the option box 
just make sure that you reset all settings and apply it will sample everything by every frame so we get a lot of keyframes now now we'll do two things we'll delete edit delete all by type the rigid bodies because we don't need them anymore we have keyframes now we can delete the gravity field and what we can also do is delete all by type this is just for cleaning up the scene really it's not necessary and uh, we delete all by type the static channels that's the computer animation channels which don't move the scale for example doesn't change in this animation so when we go to edit delete all by type static channels you see that most of them are gone now the, the spin gives it speed and Y is the up and down we'll concentrate on the Y today reaching the floor reaching the floor reaching the floor and for that purpose we go to Windows animation editors and open the graph editor the graph editor shows us the polygon sphere here with you can zoom in uh, with the usual tools with the alt key let's uh, click on translate Y and that's the interesting curve for us translate Z is just moving even faster and faster that's why it's not a linear curve it's uh, going up steeply um, that's because it accelerates why it moves in uh, in Z and here's the rotation which does the same we don't care about the rotation let's just focus on the translation so the translation actually shows us how the sphere falls to the ground jumps off again comes back and here it leaves our surface uh, so um, when you select the whole curve you see this odd looking line out it's I think it's aesthetically pleasing but uh, it doesn't help us very much it's all the keyframes down here we don't need that much keyframes you know every frame is a keyframe here 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 we don't need most of them for example and the Butterworth filter and the key reducer filter uh, you just try them out so with the curve selected here the animation curve let's go to curves and here is the new Butterworth filter let's use the option box the option box is uh, nice here because we have let's reset it to the defaults um, we have this preview button here when you click on the preview button you don't see a real change here unless you do things here with a sampling rate for example the sampling rate is currently set to 30 whatever that means 30 percent maybe yes and you can reduce this and then the curve should not change but now it changes you see now these points are lifted up moved to the left and right just a little bit and we've re reduced the sampling rate to four already so we've re reduced our keyframes dramatically without actually doing it we were only previewing it and that's a visualization which is very important otherwise you would try it out revert it try it out again so this is quite handy here so how about about here seven and now we can apply this apply and close and now we have a, an animation which is which should look realistic as before and it does whereas when you use that filter in a more dramatic way let's undo this and use the filter again curves Butterworth filter let's reset the settings here's the cutoff frequency if you have let's say this and you reduce the sampling rate as well so we have this curve let's increase the cutoff just a little bit you get this soft bouncing and this is not what bouncing is about let's apply it and close it and have a look at the animation now you 
will find it much too soft. Okay, uh, let's reverse this again by pressing Z. Now everything should be okay. We have these sharp edges. They're ab absolutely crucial. So let's select the whole curve again. And now we go to, first of all, I want to reset the Butterworth and just cancel it. And I go to curves and the key redux uh, reducer filter. Here I have a precision of one, whatever that means. But this works with this in this context just marvelously. Just have a look. I just apply this, the default settings, and I have an animation which has much less keyframes. You see so many keyframes here because of the translation and the rotation. They still have the keyframes. But uh, our uh, bumping up and down curve is pretty lean now. So both of the tools have their purpose, and I guess in motion capture animation it's really uh, touchy how to apply them, but now you know how to apply them. And with this I wish you a very good day. Bye bye.